in a larger implementation, well, I've got a bunch of Presentation Server 4. I've also got uh, Exchange servers, and we don't run Outlook through Citrix. I've also got a bunch of back-end databases with front-end client software out on client PCs, a bunch of file and print servers who also have different client access. Uh, besides a complex back network infrastructure, I also have complex access scenarios. People logging in from home, people logging in from work, people logging in with company-owned PCs, people logging in with their own personal PCs. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a DMZ. In the demilitarized zone, we're going to put in the CAG, or the Citrix Access Gateway. And we're going to uh, Citrix Access Gateway 4.2 is the first one to integrate with web interface and presentation servers. We're going to put a TLS cert or the old name for that was SSL, a Transport Layer Security Cert on the Access Gateway. And as far as the web interface traffic, this CAG does not replace the web interface. We still need a web interface. The first version of web interface that's going to work with the Access Gateway is the 4.2. So I'm going to set up a web interface 4.2 server that is going to summarize the Presentation Server 4 traffic via XML. And I can use the Citrix Access Gateway then as a proxy or an SSL, an SSL proxy to my application servers. In addition, I can configure the Advanced Access Control software on another server. That's a different web server. The Advanced Access Control software comes with Access Gateway, and that's the one that I use to configure complex policies. So I can say that uh, I'm going to endpoint analysis scan your device, and if that is a company-owned laptop, we're going to go ahead and let you have full download access to maybe some file shares back on these file servers, and uh, go, have, go ahead and give you all access to all your apps through your Citrix farm. However, when we scan the PC you come, into, come in from later that day and we find it's not the company-owned laptop, though it's your same credentials, we may decide to give you different type of access where maybe you can't download the file on these file servers, but you can access them. You can edit them with your own locally installed software. You just can't download it, so no data leakage to the client. I can decide that maybe some of your apps go ahead and go out to the non-company-owned laptop or company-owned PC but uh, maybe not some of the more crucial ones. And finally, I can go out and scan the PC and say, now that's just some internet kiosk, and you can get minimal data, HTML preview only, again, no data leakage to the client, and again, I can decide to further tighten what type of access or even what type of apps you're getting from your presentation server farm. The process here is going to be to configure one of these Web Interface 4.2 sites now to not just work directly with clients hitting it directly, but rather to work through an Advanced Access Control and Citrix Access Gateway device. So, <clears throat> in order to do that, I'm going to need to use a machine with a presentation server uh, with a Web Interface 4.2 on it. And because I only have Web Interface 4.0 on this machine, I'll need to go through some install. There's a web interface retail.exe and an Access Suite console patch to update the Access Suite console to use the new features of the web interface. The only new features of the web interface are that it integrates with advanced access control. So as I go through my install, I'm taking it in English. I'm installing the web interface 4.2 software. It's really just a next, next finish and accepting an agreement here. Um, the install goes. And then I'm also installing the MetaFrame Presentation Server Administration Snap-in Installation Wizard. This is the Access Suite Console patch. And then I'm going to need to update that. Having been done, I get to start up an Access Suite Console. So I actually have this out on Press Serve A. I'm going to move over to Press Serve A. This is my Web Interface 4.2 machine. Actually, it happens to be a Citrix server as well. I'm going to bring up the Access Suite console here, and I'm going to create a Web Interface 4.2 site. I'm going to lock this one down for use with a CAG and Advanced Access Control, point out the differences too with 4.2 and 4.0. So I'm going to create a site, and again, this will be a MetaFrame Presentation Server site. I might just want to make this another one. Let's see. Um, creating site 5. I've already got some other sites created and I might want to set this as default, but I've got some other sites as the default already. Definitely going to use a local configuration file as always. First thing I want to do here, this is a new setting. This was not available back out in the Web Interface 4.0. This is the fact that I want to use Advanced Access Control. In fact, 
I am going to click this. There is a server called AGADV, and that's the server I intend to install the access control software on. So I'm typing HTTP colon slash slash AGADV. That's the advanced access control web server. This is the web interface 4.2 server. Go next, then I'm back to telling it familiar information. Classroom farm. I can talk to press serve B if I want to. And it happens to be over XML port 8080. This is the beginning of my web interface site, but this one is not ready for use yet. Because I hit that advanced access control knob, I wouldn't be able to hit this site directly. I now have to go through the entire setup of advanced access control before this one's ready. However, here's the Metaframe 5 site that I just created. Um, the next step that I need to do, because there's also going to be an access gateway involved, is to uh, go up to Manage Secure Client Access. First I can show you that Manage Access method we've already taken care of use advanced access control through the AG ADV web server. However, there's going to be a CAG or Citrix Access Gateway device securing the ICA traffic ultimately. Therefore, we do not want to be giving out IP addresses, direct IP addresses of data collectors. Turns out we this time don't even want to give out the alternate or the translated IP address of data collectors. We don't want clients going directly to data collectors at all anymore. The plan now is for clients to be going in directly through the access gateway. We want all these clients' ICA files, sending them directly to the access gateway box, whatever FQDN that happens to be, through port 443 exclusively. Behind the scenes, we can do the port 1494 or 2598 to Citrix servers. So I'm going back to my web interface 4.2 server. I'm going to say, no, I don't want direct. I don't want altered. I don't want translated. It's going to be secure gateway direct. Secure gateway, the same thing as access gateway. And why direct? I'm assuming that my CAG or Citrix access gateway is not behind the NAT firewall, even if the Citrix servers are. So I want this direct IP address of a secure gateway. That's great, but once I do that here in Secure Client Access DMZ settings, I then need to tell it what secure gateway, what FQDN. So my requirement now is that I go down to Edit Secure Gateway Settings. And if I've created a DNS entry for my CAG, I'd put the CAG here, CAG.education, uh, uh, CTX. And I would have to spell that right. And again, that's assuming that I've already gone to my CAG and I've created a, an FQDN on the CAG. Then I've also gone and created the DNS record for wh where uh, this machine resolves CAG.education.ctx443, assuming I haven't made any changes there for a URL. And there is no ability to click an OK button here. There is no sense of having a CAG without also having an STA. When we had a standalone web server, the CTX STA DLL resided on the web interface. Whenever we start involving security, whether it's the secure gateway or the access gateway here, we have to have a secure ticket authority as a separate interface. All the Citrix servers host STAs over the Rexmail port. All I need here is one of my Citrix servers, any one of my Citrix servers. And this, notice, is a URL. I'm going to enter the FQDN in my Citrix server, but it's becoming part of a URL. So what I'm putting in here is press serve b dot education dot ctx and because I happen to know that press serve b has its xml port running over port 8080 I do need to put colon 8080 here I would not need to do anything I would leave it like that if I were running the STA over the default port port 80 but this is more real world for me I'm clicking OK on that so what have I done here? Other than an optional customizing of appearance and optional uh, client deployment issues, the main things that had to be done in order to integrate this website with advanced access control, besides the things that will have to be done in the advanced access control side, the only things that had to be done over here in the web interface side where I went to DMZ settings, I told it to give it a secure gateway direct and ICA files. Then I had to go to secure gateway settings and tell it what secure gateway cag.education.ctx, which it will resolve, and it will put the IP address that it resolves into the ICA files. I also have to have a secure ticket authority. 
the rest of the configuration for the web interface being integrated into the advanced access control form has to take place inside advanced access control software.